Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a update on the tropicals in the back. Meanwhile, there's been a lot um, of growth with the vegetables, as you can see. Even one tomato plant in a pot. Absolutely crazy. We're still waiting for the first uh, tomato to ripen. They're all green right a lot of green tomatoes still so any day now we're gonna get our first um ripe tomatoes 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 um so i've also got the uh small um potted tomatoes here too i don't know where i'm gonna put them guys too many tomatoes but in any case um they're the um, extras that I got. So I'm still waiting for the, um, what's it called, the Moringa to take off, right? I had it protected in the shade for the last two weeks and today I brought it out into the sun because it's just not growing in the uh, in the shade, guys. I had it under the uh, Sue Bell White Sapote and Moringa doesn't like shade. It, and it let me know <laughs> it hasn't grown at all except just a little bit in here starting to move that there that's all new so they need sun so that's the first plant that we're going to start with today that i got from dailies about two weeks ago um i've had very little success with moringa we're talking about the drumstick um but i really want this to work um Looks like it's going to take some time again. I've got some sweet potatoes there, which I've been um, trying to grow as well in um, grow bags. I'll show you that later. You take the, the cuttings from those uh, original plants from dailies and um, you start the sweet potatoes like that. All right, so we've had a lot of progress on the Shangxi Li. Jujubi. It's almost as tall as me now, right? Remember how I this struggled to to grow for the last two years. I don't know why. I still haven't worked out why it was struggling here in the um, old pear tree site. I had a pear tree right there. I took out the pear tree and put a Shangxi Li uh, Jujubi there and uh, a reed avocado there the reed didn't make it so if, instead of having the reed there I replaced uh, the reed with a uh, grimmel jabuticaba and wow what a success story on the uh, jabuticaba guys there should be a lot more jabuticabas um, in Melbourne planted they're so easy I mean there's only one problem they take a long time right they're very slow but um, if you're young, if you're in your 30s, um, you've got plenty of time. <laughs> you've got a lot of time on your hands. So get planting now. Jujube is a lot faster. You'll get um, results within two years. I didn't, I didn't get results till the third year. As I said, I don't know why. I don't know what was wrong. And the other jujube over there, the Sherwood, that also gave me problems for the first two years. And just like the Shangxi Li, it's taken off. It's taken off. It has, it's not as tall as the uh, as the Shangxi Li here, right? But um, it's finally taken off, and it looks like it's got flowers. So we might get some fruit from the Sherwood, right? Yeah. So. Moving right along, we've got another tomato plant here. T to be honest with you, I don't know where these tomatoes came from. This one and uh, those ones there. I think they're volunteers. But guys, I made a video, by the way, on uh, volunteer plants. That's coming soon. Um, that is, plants that just sprout and sucker everywhere on their own, whether they're vegetable or, or fruit. So that's coming soon. I filmed it yesterday. Um... The new reed avocado that I have in a pot is doing great. Like I keep saying over and over, 
I wish I could have put this in the, in the ground. It's ripe and ready to be planted because not only is it holding fruit, it's also um, pushing out new growth on every single tip. So I would have loved for this to have been in the ground, guys. Right? It's so happy. I, I, I love seeing happy avocado trees. Look at this here. Right? It's very, very happy. And it looks like it's got um, a flower there on the end. It's very unusual. Um, at the end of December. Usually these flower in spring. So that's very unusual. Um, the wampy tree that I planted um, 10 months ago didn't flower this um, second time, this second round. I, when I bought it, it already was flowering from dailies and we got a dozen fruit from it. And the thing is here, this is not an ideal position to put a, a wampy. Wampy is in the same category as citrus. It needs full sun and it only gets partial sun. So it let me know. <laughs> you let me know by not flowering or fruiting this year right look it's just pushed out the first new growth for the whole year just that there in the last week or two in December I mean it's very happy it's very lush and green but it's it's talking the way plants talk to you is by their um their leaves and their flowers the leaves are looking fantastic but the there's no flowers, so we're not going to get any fruit from the um, Wampy. This is the, which one is this? This is the Yim Pei, the Yim Pei Wampy. So, um, yeah, whereas the uh, Fuyu persimmon here is fully loaded. This is its year. It, it takes off every other year. It's got over... Over 300 persimmon on the uh, Fuyu. It's just amazing, guys. But again, the problem with uh, abundance is the birds. I've got to net this tree. If I don't net this tree, I'm in big, big, big trouble. They won't leave a single persimmon. Not one. Not even one. They're really nasty, as you saw with the apricot. Right? So... But that doesn't happen till autumn. I don't cover this till uh, April. Yeah, around April. The other chiku, the oldest one I have, the... Um, did I say chiku? The other jujubi. I'm half asleep, guys. I didn't get a, a good sleep last night. So I'm going to be making a few... Um, um, mistakes in my naming of trees. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm a little sleep deprived. I was going to say this is the um, the Chico Jujubi, which has only just now set its first fruit. Um, at the at the um, end of uh, December, there's the first one. Whereas Elisa's Jujubis have been setting fruit since November, a month ago. So I don't know why. Oh, we have a friendly critter in here. I wish there were more of these guys. Is that a friendly critter? I think he is. Are you friendly? Right? He's moving really slowly. That looks like a beetle. Yeah, we need we need all the friends we can get in the garden. This one is absolutely loaded. Um, I'm going to have to trim it around the sides, especially here. Look, it's even hanging out here. Crazy, right? So what I missed out with the Lee and Shangxi Lee and Sherwood, um, I'm, I'm making it up with the uh, Chico, the Chico variety. This is crazy in here. And like I said, the fruit fly has discovered uh, Melbourne's jujubes. Nothing is safe anymore. We enjoyed, or I enjoyed, um, 15 years of being free of fruit fly right and then recently it's it's come hard it's come strong guys fruit fly is is here now and it's not going away this is the jamun jambulan which is um doing really well 
I can't wait for it to get really huge, right? It's already at seven feet. Um, by the end of the season, by April, I want to see this at 10 feet. It's a beautiful tree, right? I'm not growing it only for the fruit, which is, you know, average, they say, of average quality. I, I, I like the, the look of the, the stems and the, and the leaves. Um, it's very attractive. So it's going to be the, the, the very first reason that I'm planting it is because of a canopy. I want a canopy tree. A canopy tree over, um, over the top up here. Right up there, actually. Combine, connecting the, um, the uh, uh, Jabuticaba, the uh, Jujubi, right? So connecting the two trees here with a bridge. So that's what that's why I planted that there. And recently I put on a seedling wampy in the ground too. I've got a couple of others that I want to plant. I don't know where. Right? I grew these from seed. There's two of them here. Uh, it's not everyone's favorite fruit. It's for me it's a novelty. It falls into the novelty category, like coffee. Just for fun, right? Um, that's the... Oh, we're going to struggle today to come up with names. That's the... Um, cherry of the Rio Grande, which has got all its leaves back now. Um, it took about three months to get re-coated after dropping most of its leaves in winter and that's looking pretty good the uh, the dragon fruit here uh, I believe that's the pearl the white flesh pearl dragon fruit I've got I think I've got two of them planted yeah I put two of them in the ground right and this structure I don't know how well it's gonna hold it was makeshift Seems to be holding okay. It was just done on the fly with what timber I had using star pickets on each corner. So I will see what happens, if it collapses or what. The idea was to um, grow the Australian native tamarind through the center. See what I've done there, right? And that one is already, um, that's like a Jack in the Beanstalk tree. That's already, geez, let's see, two, four, six, eight, wow, 10 meters. That's already 10 meters high, that uh, Australian native tamarind. The plan was to have this dragon fruit attach itself. See how it's got all these little funky roots, air roots? Ah, these roots here, air roots, right? And there's more over there. Yeah, those air roots, to get these little roots here, attach themselves to the, um, the tamarind tree. That's the plan. So far, they're not, they're not um, anywhere touching. And then to climb up, get the dragon fruit to climb up, the tamarind. Uh, the, yeah, the tamarind. That's the plan. That's the long-term plan. So I'm trying to cross my fingers that this holds this structure holds until they start gripping onto the tamarind right and once they do it doesn't matter what happens here if this falls down <laughs> those roots man those roots are brutal they don't let go okay next um one of Let's see, how many do we have? One of three Kohala Longan trees. This one is about, well, I've had it for, I think I've had it for a year and a half in the ground, right? And it was about a year and a, actually it was about two and a half years old when I got it. So this is a four year old, at least four years old uh, Kohala Longan. And it's been flowering now for a couple of months. And it looks like it's got something set. Not sure. All right, fruit, possibly, maybe. 
very hard to see something's going on there yeah up here as well all over but it's still flowering then we've got the pomelo at the back and you've all seen the pomelo before that's a, a real awesome tree right beautiful tree the the green sapote is also now close to seven feet just a tad over two meters and since I pulled out the stake it's very hard to get around here because of the dragon fruit Ooh. since I pulled out the central stake and put in the four stakes instead it's taken off in the middle so we've got new growth these are all new um, shoots that have come on the side in the middle of the tree all these here it's all new it's even got one growing down there actually it's got a couple down there yeah so doing pretty good guys that's the green sapote which I've had in the ground now for gee I can't remember exactly I think three years or four years maybe four years guys it's all off memory doesn't it look like the Mame sapote it looks like um, a young not young but a, a baby version of the um, Mame I wish that my mate does as well as this. This is cold tolerant. This is fully cold tolerant. It's nothing like the sooks. This, this, this green sapote is a champion. It's a, I'm going to make a video someday with all the champion tropicals. Low quad is at the top. <laughs> Low quad is the winner. It beats every one of them. Uh, the green sapote is probably number two on the list. So very, very um, hardy and cold tolerant. There's only one thing I don't like about it. It's not very sturdy. I've had it collapse on me twice. And I don't know by what luck it didn't snap. Right? It's got a very weak um, main stem, guys. That's why I've done this to it, right? I've restrained it like um, a straight jacket. Yeah. So it doesn't happen again. So that's one of two green sapotes. I've got another one, which is a little smaller. And behind it is a Sue Bell white sapote, which has, has taken off now. And it's, um, gee, what are you now, guy? 4.5 meters. I don't know how we're going to get the white sapotes up there. I had to do that, guys, because there's no room in here for it to go left or right to hang. You can't hang around here. <laughs> there's no room with a persimmon there the pomelo here right and the green sapote here sorry we can't hang we have to go up and up it went okay and there I've got a mulberry which is meant to be a dwarf mulberry but Jesus it's almost touching the the tamarind that's uh, five meters this this uh, Dwarf mulberry is five meters tall guys and I've only had it in the ground for two years in two years It grew to five meters Well, it, it was probably two years old when I got it from dailies, right? Look at it That one there that's the dwarf mulberry what a joke. That's not a dwarf <sighs> So then we've got the um the jujube, not the jujube. See, I, I tell you, I'm going to mix up my words today. The uh, jabuticaba, which I pruned a couple of weeks ago. Not much change. Still the same. The pink guava, the Hawaiian guava. Still waiting to see the first flower. As you saw, the Indian white guava is flowering. Just started a couple of weeks ago. There's no... There's no... Um, there's no uh, flowers yet here on the pink. It's still sleeping. Right? There they are there. So it hasn't started. It's a late comer. Oh, and this is the the Kerry star fruit, which is also pushing out a lot of growth. As you saw, it's been pushing now for over a month. Still waiting for the first flowers if they come. But looking good. Uh, for half the year it looks dead like a skeleton and then over summer and autumn it says yep 
I wasn't dead at all. I just tricked you. So the trickster here, better give us some uh, flowers soon. <clears throat> There's some pruning of the um, of the um, ice cream bean, which I did a few days ago. I left the mess there on the ground. The ice cream bean is this tree here, and that's starting to flower. It started flowering and setting beans already last week. And they're the first ones right there. There you go. The first ice cream beans for 2024. Uh, and that's only two weeks. Not even two weeks. Since we ate the last ice cream bean for 2023. So this guy doesn't mess around. He gets straight to work once the crop is finished. It gets to work and starts setting fruit again for the new year within days, literally within days. Okay, this is the um, Bosworth lychee. Here we have the, um, the ice cream bean seedlings, which um, are still waiting for new homes, right? And as you can see, they're very healthy guys, look, in pots, waiting for buyers, waiting for new homes in Melbourne, super healthy super healthy i'm looking after them that's why i'm charging guys i can't give these away for free because i'm watering them every single day for you i'm caring for them i'm loving them right every one of them look look how good they look they look amazing so get in there get get on the um the um instagram and send me a message or email me my email is i'm um, showing there too on youtube so back to the Bosworth lychee. Look at that, nice flush. Slow, everything happens here really slow with these guys, right? But the good news is um, there's a lot of um, growth. This should have happened back in spring. And, and as I've said before, spring warmth arrived and then it got cold again. And when that happens, all the new growth dies. That's why uh, it's taken so long. All this shoulda, coulda, woulda taken place in September, October. So again, we lost three months because of Melbourne's erratic weather. Right? 28 one day, 14 the next day. You can't have light you like that, guys. You can't do it. Unless you get a cheat tree. A cheat tree is having a... A six, seven, eight-year-old lychee tree delivered to your, delivered to you on a platter. Then yes, then it doesn't matter what the weather is. It's already gone through the um, um, the baby stage, the sook stage, right? Okay, so uh, what have we got here? We've got um, something setting. Let's get closer. Yep, there you go. This is the Bosworth lychee. We've got something going on there. Something's going on. So we'll see what happens with that. So good signs all around, right? On the uh, Bosworth. I think it's also known as the B3. I, c I can't remember. <clears throat> That's the... Uh, the latest tree I planted in the ground about two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago. The Lukuma from Dailies, right? Not much change, actually no change at all in the first two weeks, but it's not going backwards. You know how you plant a tree, a tropical tree in summer and it gets knocked, knocked around for whatever reason? This is exactly how it was when I unboxed it. So good news. As long as it doesn't go backwards, we're going in the right direction, right? So it's just waiting for some warmer weather to start growing. This is the uh, African Pride Custard Apple, which has got its um, foliage back after I trimmed it, pruned it back in October, right? I can smell the Cherry Moya flowers like perfume they smell like sweet 
like, like candy you know candy how you I can see the flower there it is up there I'll show you I'm smelling that guy right there let me zoom in him see that open flower he is sending out some really sweet candy like fragrance like you want to eat him like sugar sugar with some kind of um, flavoring very delicious and the wind oh there's another one there oh it's actually there everywhere the wind is blowing that scent into my nostrils see it yeah so yeah pretty cool these ones set fruit though until the end of summer there's another one that one look at that so until the end of february uh, these are just going to be looking and smelling nice no 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 fruit set unless you know something drastic takes place okay this is the other new arrival that i had a couple of weeks ago the yellow mangosteen that's also uh not showing any signs of new growth in two weeks which is always good in my uh book with these sooks right this is very very sensitive to melbourne not the gold coast we're in melbourne guys right <laughs> in melbourne anything can happen with the weather now this third one that i planted on the same day this one has has um had new growth this is the um uh sugar apple the sugar apple has done something in the last two weeks microscopic we have to get really close okay that there is all new hang on that there's new that's new growth that wasn't there two weeks ago that there is new in the last two weeks microscopic guys that there is all new hang on i don't want to break it off see that? that that little leaf in the middle there that one there that's new and that's new as well so yeah so i didn't expect the the sugar apple to be the first one to send uh, new growth out of the three nothing on the uh yellow mangosteen <coughs> and nothing on the lucuma but all three of them are looking really healthy guys really happy really lush deep green um oh hang on wait a minute there is new growth sorry i take it back these were hiding three new leaves have come on the lucuma those three that weren't there two weeks ago so we do have new growth hang on uh those three there they're new okay you can see the color too right so oh what's going on back here there's another one it's hi they're hiding and there's a leaf in there too that's new yeah that little fella there see that leaf there the green the light light green that's also new for the last two weeks you got to really get in there to see what's going on okay so let's get out of here without st stepping without stepping on anything it's so easy to just <laughs> destroy got to be very very careful and uh i'm glad that the light sheet now is getting a lot more sun than it was before because of the the prune that i did of the jabbo that prune i did is letting in a lot of light that wasn't there before right um and by moving the banana plant the overhead banana canopy pot potted banana back there originally it was over here right in there right and blocking the sun so the light is getting a lot more sun the lucuma is getting a few hours of sun as well as you can see but the sugar apple 
and the yellow mango scene aren't getting much well the sugar apples getting dappled light see that dappled light no direct sun the yellow mango scene is getting almost no direct sun that's getting the most shade and that one is the most sensitive out of the three sun sensitive how do i know guys i've lost four or five of them over the last eight years that's how i know they don't like the sun summer we're talking summer sun not winter sun oh and over there i have the uh the malabar chestnut and that's doing really well that's in um full shade that's another sun sensitive tropical and over there you can see the bananas hanging that i had to uh protect from collapsing that's a huge bunch there of bananas <clears throat> so there's always work guys there's always work to do to uh, protect these plants okay there's some more uh, ice cream beans there that are waiting for um, a new home very very healthy look look at that look at that guys you're missing out if you're not um, picking up one of these beautiful um, plants from Fruitopia they're fully acclimated to our climate here okay so 60 bucks for one of those ice cream beans um, okay so now I've got the uh, chompu longan here which has been in the ground for about 10 months flowering like mad I don't want it to set any fruit though at this young age <clears throat> the picketan has fully recovered from its funk <clears throat> but it didn't set any um, fruit this year which is fine I want it to properly recover uh, looks like we've lost the rose apple which is a big shock to me it's all right I'll get another one it might recover but I doubt it it's got those um, leaves there in the middle so that's a real bummer yeah I, I don't know why and how that happened very shocking the um, the Filipinos favorite citrus the calamondan or calamansi look at the difference um, this citrus and that rose apple that I showed you are almost the same age look at the difference guys with citrus here come on you citrus you plant and forget look how healthy it is and I haven't pampered it at all nothing no pampering another star fruit this is the first star fruit I planted 10 years ago yeah this is a 10 year old star fruit and it hasn't fruited for us yet hello 10 years no fruit this is the Thai I can't I can't remember the name Thai something Thai not Thai night Thai night oh, I can't remember but it's looking very good with this new coat they always get nice coats in summer and just sit there looking pretty from December until June no flowers for six months just pretty just pretty just like a pretty woman <laughs> that's standing on the street corner <laughs> and doesn't give out yeah so that's what this does guys for 10 years it's been hanging out on the corner looking pretty and it hasn't um, given one single fruit how's that for a tease next the oldest uh, um, long long and I have uh, Kohala as well and this one has surprised me it's finally doing something Wow Wow it's actually looking happy and perky and let's go 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 well 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 what do you know so yeah overnight guys overnight this nasty nasty sad looking longan as you can see really nasty looking has decided to take off with growth there and there which is not surprising it does that every year but look at this 
Wow, that's, that's uh, very surprising. And something else is going on in there, right? Activity and in there, activity. So I've had this one for four years in the ground. Um, just, yeah, just roll with it, guys. I can't explain it. That's from behind, right? Hang on, let me widen that. There, that's the tree there. This is probably five to six years old, this uh, longan. Sickly on the left and happy on the right. Go figure. Yeah. This is another Kohala Longan, which I planted the same day as the first one I showed you earlier. Um, yeah, this is doing something as well at the top. It hasn't been so happy. It's got those droopy leaves, right? It's got old leaves falling off. Yeah, so this is the third Kohala Longan. And uh, I don't want these to set any fruit at this stage. I just want them to grow. Grow like this. This is what I want to see. I want to see this before I see fruit. I don't want the fruit. I want growth. I want to see a tree. What else? Um, a Thai guava, which has really struggled here. Um, I've had it in the pot for two years and it died back twice. Over two winters, see the die back on the main stem, and then it shot out again. Um, this is the big, huge Thai guava, the crunchy one, the white one. But guys, not easy. I've got two of them. I've got another one as well, <coughs> which I recently planted in the ground. There's the, the last ice cream beans from a month ago. Look how many there are. Yeah, so... What else have we got here, guys? The Fuerte Avocado. It's got some great uh, fruit set. Very happy with this. This has uh, been in the ground now for about five years. So it's about a seven-year-old tree. It's fully loaded. It's easily got... Um, 50, at least 50 avocados on it. Uh, they're not fruitlets anymore. They all hung on. Right? Some of them have fallen off, I noticed. There's three there. So this has done really well. Really, really well. I'm very happy after waiting five years for it to uh, blast off. And we're back to the cherry moya. This is the fina de hete. <laughs> yeah. This one is... Uh, um, I've had this in the ground for 10 years. So it's a 11 to 12 year old cherry moya. Mm, I love the flowers. The smell of the flowers. Wow. So nice. Mm. But no, no more hand pollinating. I'm done with that. Been there and done that. There's the Monstera Deliciosa getting a huge new leaf. A babaco that hasn't done anything except grow for the last four years in this position. I just transplanted this from a cutting. Right? It's pretty. Someday it might fruit. We'll just leave it there. There's another Fuerte avocado. Very nice. <coughs> I don't know what this is. Do you guys recognize what this is? These hang on to the tree. Um, like that, right? I don't know if it's, a, if it's a critter. And look what it's doing to the leaf. I don't know if it's a critter. Or um, looks like it is because it's eaten the leaf on the avocado. And it won't, it won't come off. It, it's like like oh there you go what is this guys i've seen about oh damn i think that moved and jumped 
Yeah, that's definitely alive. I don't know what this is. It looks like a cocoon. Do you guys recognize this? Huh? I don't know what that is. I thought it jumped on me. Or is it my imagination? Yeah. I've picked around 20 in the last um, few months from the trees. They just hang like bats. <laughs> Scary. Ooh. Scary. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. This is another canister. That See how this is getting all this new growth? This is fully shaded under the Fuerte Avocado. It doesn't get any full sun. And this is what I was expecting from the other canister in the front yard. And look how green the old leaves are, are on this. See how the old leaves have not turned um, brown? Well, this one has. Oh, it just came off. And... Okay, this one is... So can, well, I'm going to take it off anyway. This one it was um, snapped by something. So the point is... It's old leaves are green. And the new leaves are green, obviously, right? So... Yeah. This one was in the greenhouse all winter. It survived. And I decided to put it in the ground. Very slow growing. Very slow. I got some... Um, white Sapoti seedlings volunteers that have um, planted themselves here one there and one there so we've got two uh, I'm gonna leave them there as um, canopy trees I've got a Rolinia that also survived last winter in the greenhouse and it's been here in the ground now for two months it's struggling to take off some critter keeps eating its leaves. It's not helping at all. See the leaves, how they're getting eaten? Every single leaf, guys. Look at this leaf. Total destruction. So it's a struggle to keep these guys going. Um, when you have critters joining in. This is the, um, the yellow Jabuticaba. And so is that one there. There's two of them. Right? They're looking okay-ish. They love the rain. When it rains, when it rains, guys, these yellow jabuticabas, they perk right up. They're like, whoa, party time. And then when it's dry for a week, just one week of, of no rain, they freak out. They say, oh, my God, it's so dry. Ah, emergency, emergency. They, they, they look like, like this. They're like dead. And then, like, they're like that. They're like that. With one drop of rain. Unreal. What kind of plant is that? Okay, this is something I haven't shown you at all. That's the... Um, the golden soursop, guys. There was just a skeleton all spring. It had no, no leaves. Well, it had two leaves on it, right? And during the month of December... The last four weeks it's put a coat on fully recovered from um, its funk so I'm pretty wrapped about that I don't understand why the critters are eating the Rolinia but they're not eating the soursop leaves and they're like literally um, two feet apart go figure you know people say oh you got to do this and you got to do that you got to do this and you got to do that well what about that why, why, why isn't that one needing all that so it's very strange like when you try to work out mathematics a formula it doesn't add up it doesn't add up guys this has had one leaf two leaves eaten but the rest of it is looking pretty good nice nice new foliage very very happy looking okay so that's that that's the um, the golden soursop Okay, um, and then I've got the the Beanley Black. Um, mulberry for chop and drop. I didn't plant this for the berries, guys. 
The birds beat me anyway, so there's no chance I'm going to get any fruit. But it's a great chop and drop every month. Every month I, um, I hack it back and I feed the plants underneath. <clears throat> okay, so next. Oh, and there's the um, Tahiti Black, black Sapoti. All spring, it was teasing me with uh, little fruitlets or flowers and they all dropped. And now it's take two. It's um, trying to set fruit again for the second time. So we lost the spring um, a fruit flush. And now it's trying again in summer. Okay, so over here we have a mystery Mame Sapodi. I forgot the name of it. That was a stick all spring. And now in the last week, it wants to live. It wants to live, guys. It's giving me that. It's giving me that. Right? A few signs of life. And that around the side here. See that? My Mesa Podi. And now the variety, I'm not too sure. Uh, unless I check on my computer. I can't remember, guys. I'm sorry. Here, I've got a uh, a chacha, one of four, which survived in the greenhouse over uh, over winter. This one is doing the best out of the four, and I put all. I, actually, I put three of them in the ground um, just to see how they do in the ground because I don't think they like being in pots. Well, that's my experience. So. Let's see what the achacha does here in the ground. <clears throat> I've got it underneath the, uh, the mulberry. Right, and next to the ginger. That's all ginger there. Okay, so. Got a trombone zucchini. I planted in there. I had excess plants. That's the gyro, itchy gyro persimmon, which are really huge, big fat fuyu type of um, persimmon. And they're usually the first cabs off the rank in um, late March. And I've got to protect that as well from the critters. Another persimmon here, a young one. This gyro is uh, 13 years old. So that's a big boy, right? Whereas this persimmon here is only two years old. It's a young baby. And this is the Day Day Maru, astringent variety. Looks like we lost a branch to someone. Yep. It's all right. Jerusalem artichoke. Um, ornamental. Um, oh my gosh <laughs> come on guys not ornamental ornamental ginger ornamental turmeric I can't remember that's a, a new white chatut mulberry which is being which is struggling up against the Jerusalem artichoke the thing is these guys here they die back in autumn so around March, April, these will all be gone. They'll be actually, they'll start um, uh, sending out sunflowers, beautiful sunflowers in autumn, and then it all dies back in uh, April, May. So then, the new tree can take off here. The white chatut, Pakistan, Pakistan white mulberry can, can take off. Right? This has been in the ground only one year. Look how much tree there is guys huh in one year it's right underneath the uh, Dukas banana bunch oh I see the birds have taken the first apricots from my moor park of course they have they're nasty 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 guys I got the nastiest um, birds and um, vermin I saw a rat last week behind that shed 
big fat rat eating my uh, Afurer mandarins. Great. I'll show you that in a bit. What he did. And um, they're eating the the um, pepinos. I think the rats are. Right. Big fat pepinos. I've got to, I've got to uh, harvest them when they're green. Otherwise, I lose them to the rats or whoever is in here having a feast I, I can't I can't um, protect all these guys it's 30 feet long with netting too much work I'm just not up up to it that's um, the newest Wysopodi I planted over a year ago um, it died back to a stick and now it's growing back it's the Max Gold. Uh, I'm not sure if it if it's the rootstock or the um, graft. Um, yeah, someone asked me in the comments if it's the rootstock that's remained, right? Because this is the um, the graft here that died, right? Then we've got this side branch coming out, and I don't know if that's the rootstock or not. Mm. Don't know. It's hard to see. Anyway, it's, at least it's growing, which it didn't do the first year. The first year, it died back. I don't know why. Okay, then we've got all the lemons here. Oh, by the way, what's going on with the lemons here, guys? Any advice? They're getting all these black speckles. See those black speckles? What's that disease called? Right, we've got a healthy lemon here. Right, healthy lemons there. And then we get, we're get we getting these speckles. Like it's got the mumps. Yeah, it's the, um, the lemons on the lower level, not the ones up here. They're fine. Yeah, so just a bit of feedback on that, please. Not a big deal for me anyway. There's so many lemons. Um, Yacon. Growing in a grow bag. Right? They do great in a grow bag. Look how easy that was to tear. <laughs> I just touched it and it tore. Here we've got um, turmeric. Okay. Plantain. Pacific plantain is the name of the variety someone asked me. Above me. More Jerusalem artichoke in here. Right. The new jackfruit. It's down in here. There he is. Right there. Next to the black sapote over there. I did this strategically, guys, for protection. That's why I put him there. Um, Daly's starfruit tree. Daly's something, I forgot the name. That one there. It died back completely and it's coming back now. Um, that's an experiment to see if it makes any difference growing the starfruit in full shade. That's all shaded in there. Right? Full shade. Because someone told me star fruit doesn't like direct sun. Star fruit doesn't like wind. Well, there's no wind and there's no sun in there. Let's see what that does. Here we have a... No, that's not the right tag. A prune, a French prune tree. Trying to, to grow. In all this um, jungle, Yacon jungle. And it's got a couple of fruit. Which, of course, the birds and the rats will get. Unless I bag them with steel <laughs> steel nets that tree has only been in the ground for uh just under two years it's a dwarf it's a dwarf prune tree uh lots and lots of mandarins that we didn't eat have fallen off the uh mandarin tree and there's still hundreds we can't eat them guys we can't eat them and they're dried out these are all dry now right they're no good so that's all right. 
And the, the crazy thing is the rats and the birds won't eat these. They won't touch them. They eat my apricots instead. The fruit that's meant for me, right? These apricots here, these are meant for me. And uh, they eat these. They won't, they won't eat all that, all those apricots, all those uh, mandarins on the ground. These are potatoes in grow bags, which are doing really well. Multi-grafted apple tree. Uh, lettuce going um, to seed. Um, over, what do you call it? Uh, surplus tomatoes, which I just threw in the ground there. The main tomato patch back there. Another mulberry for, for um, chop and drop. And also for... Um, eating if we get any okay let's go back there this is the rocotto chili pepper this is amazing i shouldn't have planted it here in hindsight because it's in my way of the path here where i walk so i have to keep trimming it cut 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 look at all the flowers it's so vigorous look at all these flowers guys what's going on it's like a hundred over a hundred flowers and every flower sets fruit Amazing uh, plant. 100% recommend the uh, Rocotto. Right? Pepper. And they're very, very hot. So if you like hot, this is the only, this is the only plant you need. 